Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor. Um, let's see, I got up early this morning. I wanted to, I knew that the FOMO would begin today uh, in in financial media. And so kind of wanted to get an early start this morning and get this thing going. But before I get it going, I want to give Mike Jansen a shout out. Um, he's, he's at Colts Stadium PA. He is, uh, I've talked about him a lot on my channel over the, over the last year. Uh, because he created my intro and my outro. Um, and so uh, he did an update to my outro. The other day, my um, my dad told me that, that my outro, it says your outro says that you have 11 million views and you need to update that because now you've got over 13 million views. And so um, I, I talked to Mike Jensen and I said, man, uh, can you up, because he created it. So I said, can you mind updating that number? Um, and, and so he updated my number to, it's like 13 million now. And so I wanted to give Mike a shout out and let everybody know Mike has a uh, production company. He, he, he's the announcer for the Indianapolis Colts an NFL football team, but he also uh, has a production company where he, he produces things like what he's done for me. And, and so if you're needing any kind of production work with video and that type thing, go get his, go give him a follow. And then he's got a website. I think his website's down this morning, but, um, it's not always down. So go follow him first and then you can get in touch with him. Okay. Um, next, uh, this is okay. Squawk box this morning has already done two, not one, but two segments on Bitcoin. And they will do more this morning because, as we predicted, they've picked up the the uh, the FOMO on because Bitcoin this last week and it didn't just cross ten thousand, it crossed eleven thousand, and so they they have of course picked it up. Um, Joe Kernan is the first. Uh, this guy here has become what he's joking a little bit, but I, I believe he's he's the first cheerleader that they have. Um, uh, it says the introduction of Libra illustrated the real benefits of Bitcoin that was absent from from Libra. It's clearly a positive for Bitcoin, says Susquehanna's Bart Smith. So I don't think there's any question that this Libra thing, as controversial as it is, um, has really ignited something uh, and ignited people paying attention to crypto. And that's a good thing. And it, 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 it ignited uh, Ripple's customer base or their, the customers they had been working with. Brad Garlinghouse said that they had their record week. So it's obviously been a great thing for crypto um, adoption. And then I, I tweeted this, that Squawk, Squawk CNBC, um, they're doing a second Bitcoin segment of the show in a few minutes. The Bitcoin 10K and 11K headlines will be everywhere by this afternoon. Yes, they will. Now, there's one thing I wanted to note in this. I watched the second segment and I wanted to make sure that everybody out there understands a, a phenomenon on in, in Wall Street media and on Wall Street. Um, I watched the the young guy on there just makes me want to throw up Andrew Ross Sorkin. He's a young guy who's obviously a an Ivy League graduate. He to me, that guy is symbolic of the the arrogance of the elitist people on Wall Street. That guy, and, and when I say elitists, I mean everyone from, from the guys at Goldman Sachs to the guys that, I mean, they go back and forth between the, whether it's the Treasury or the SEC, it's all one big, or, or the financial media, it's all one big circle of people. They all know each other. They all went to Harvard, Columbia, Yale, and all of that, and they all look down on you and me, most importantly, all of them. That's how they see the world. And, and as I've said a million times on this channel, digital assets, they represent you and I being able to, to come back for, for what I see was the, the fin I saw the financial crisis as booting many people out of the middle class 
and, and it, as a direct result of the irresponsibility and the 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 uh, intentional, in my opinion, it intentional um, shifting of wealth to a lot of these bankers that were bailed out. Those bailouts that occurred back then, they it just as easily, they just as easily could have said, okay, well we, we're in this horrible situation. Why don't we, why don't we just uh, give some massive tax uh, credit to the to the people? Just issue that bailout money, seven hundred and something billion dollars. Why not just write a check to the people of the United States and every citizen gets a check? Well, they didn't do that. They bailed out the banks. Well, <laughs> why didn't they? Well, it's an obvious reason. But I watched, uh, tying this back in, I watched the, the Andrew Ross Sork, and every time he's on there, he's got this little smarmy look on his face. And he's quite, well, well I, just, I just can't get my mind around this. I don't understand quite how this is all going to work. And the reason he's like that is the same. He's, he's like that because he is the He believes in all, his school taught him that you believe in the central banker, the centralized control. And the reason that they all believe in all of that is because they are the ones that benefit the most, just like the bankers were the ones that received the bailout. They're in the club. Once they graduate from Harvard and Yale and Columbia and all of these 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 schools, they're automatically it's like a stamp that says you're smarter than everybody, and they all believe it. And they and then they go to all those different organizations, and they're taken care of for the rest of their life. Digital assets are counter all of that. Digital assets represent the anti those people and they know it. And that's why the Andrew Ross Sorkins of the world, oh, I just can't, don't seem to get this. That's why you smell the arrogance in what they say. Anyway, that's my rant on that. It, it just makes me, it disgusts me to listen. But again, they, I believe behind the scenes know what's coming, but they're not ready to, to fully go in and say, okay, yes. <laughs> but but they will. It's coming, and the because the beauty of this is the design of it is such that they have no choice. The banks have no choice. That is what this is about. Okay, um, next from XRP Veteran. Um, this is a tweet from the Bank of International Settlements. But XRP Veteran hit on a on a point that I kind of hit on the other day. But I, I've seen it crop up, and it's important for you to, to you to for you to see. XRP veteran, uh, Bank of International Settlements, regulators need to ensure a level playing field. This term keeps coming up, level playing field between big techs and big banks, taking into a, a account big techs, wide customer base, access to information, and broad ranging business models. Well, I mentioned, I think it was yesterday, that there, there was a, a conference where I believe it was Ryan Zagone from Ripple was on a stage. And the subject of Bitcoin and XRP came up, and he and he said he said we need a I think he said we need a regulatory le level playing field. And he was making the point that for whatever reason that the SEC people had come out and just declared S that Bitcoin and Ethereum were not securities. And I always thought it was strange at the time, but they would they would not and have not said the word XRP or Ripple will not even say the word. But they come out and say, oh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, that's, those are just not security. Well, um, and then, so Ron, Ron Zagone said, well, if you give us a, a level playing field, uh, obviously XRP is the greatest digital, he didn't say this, I'm saying this, XRP is the greatest digital asset ever created. It's the fastest, the cheapest, the most scalable, and all of that. And they know it. And so... Um, but he, he was making the point that if you ever made it a level playing, made the regulation a level playing field, um, XRP is no more a security than Bitcoin or anything else. If you gave it that status and you came out and said it, XRP would immediately crush all of them. And so he, he was, I think, voicing some frustration there. Well, here in XRP Veterans Thread, um, he gives a couple of clips. The first one. Brad Garlinghouse uses the same terminology, level playing field. But then it gets even more interesting when you get to it. He puts a clip from Tr Donald Trump who says that we need a level playing field. And then he gets down here to, for, this is a quote from uh, Katal, Yoshitaka Katal, for F the CEO of SBI Holdings. There's basically no value for Bitcoin. The current price of Bitcoin makes it harder 
and, and harder to use in practical ways. So I think that XRP will probably become the number one crypto asset. We are aiming to make that happen. And then um, he tweets out this, um, there's an article from Coindesk, BIS wants level playing field. So all you keep hearing this drumbeat, level playing field, level playing field, level playing field, because the people at Ripple, they know that once this field is level, <laughs> once it's level, XR, the XRP, the cream will rise to the top. They know it. And so I think that's why this drumbeat keeps happening. Okay, um, next. Now, this is, this is pretty funny. Um, normally Anthony Pompliano is complete, you know, I, I like the guy he's, I think he's been, even though he's a Bitcoin guy and he's always tooting the horn of Bitcoin. Uh, I think this weekend he made a couple of slip ups in that um, he's not giving the, the right credit where credit's due every week. Pompliano puts out his top, uh, let's see, it's the top 10 things that are top five or so things that happened in crypto. He does not even put in here the money gram deal. And again, we go back to, they won't say the words XRP or Ripple. Well, money gram is money. Ripple being the first digital asset com related company that has, that has partnered with a firm like this um, for actually using digital assets in the space uh, or actually using digital assets in money flows commercially. That is huge news. It's bigger the news than anything, but he doesn't include it in his list because he can't. He, for the same reason, the level playing field, you don't, if you have a level playing field and you have XRP side by side with all these things, there is no level because XRP will just crush them all and they know it. And that's why they, that's why they can't put it in lists like this. And so Dan Rocky, is making this point and probably the biggest thing this week ripple begins partnership with moneygram one of the biggest remittance banks in the world to start using xrp as a bridge currency for remittance around the world beyond huge for ripple but also for the crypto space exactly give them a follow at dan rocky um and next uh moon overlord had said this and then xrp crypto wolf made a really good point moon overlord says I think alts will make a more rapid comeback than Bitcoin when they get started. I think soon. And Bitcoin has been going parabolic. Altcoin market caps are much smaller. You can two to three times coins on Binance with just a small amount of Bitcoin. Um, and then XRP Crypto Wolf comes in and he says, XRP is one of the few major alts that hasn't done a two or three times yet. And that's just one of the many reasons why it will skyrocket. Don't forget that it, it's always the last one to pump, but it's definitely worth the wait since patience is definitely a virtue. So perseverance is key. Now folks, I want to make two points. He's right. The first one is he's right. XRP is always the last one. And it all, and the other thing is it always goes up more than the other. And the other part of this is in every bull market I've participated in, Bitcoin goes first. And then the money just seems to like kind of sift down. Uh, it reminds me of the, the, uh, the, my son likes to play the, uh, what is that? Connect four, the, where the, where you put in the, you put in the coins in the top of the thing and they just kind of go down into the thing. That's how it's worked since I've been in this. Bitcoin gets the money first and then it eventually sifts down into the good altcoins. And it, uh, a lot, oftentimes a lot of it sifts down into the crappy altcoins. But eventually those will go to zero, as Brad Garlinghouse has said, and you will have XRP and a handful of the good ones left. Um, next, I wanted to show you from King Solomon at XRP underscore Al. He put out a great tweet, I believe, yesterday. Um, yes, yesterday. Current XRP price is 47 cents. XRP all-time high is $3.84. All via no X. No, remember, he's what he's saying is when, when we went to 384 in 2017, we didn't have any of this. No X rapid, no 200 plus customers, no IMF photo ops, no institutional onboarding, no X current 4.0 X rapid enabled, no INA TBA, no RIA, no Tata, no MoneyGram, no mention of R3 Hyperledger. WTF do you think do you think's about to happen? And I'll add a couple to that. We had no backed coming in. We had no Fidelity Digital Assets coming in. We, we did not have TD Ameritrade who has said they're going to open it up to a, 
11 million, their 11 million retail customers. We, we, the, the things we didn't have, we, Coinbase didn't have XRP. Coinbase Pro didn't have XRP. The things that we have, we didn't have, I think, a hundred platforms that we now have. SBI Virtual Currencies was not opening and it's happening in July is my understanding. There are hundreds of things that we didn't have. The liquidity that ha that can come into this system on this run is an unbelievable amount. And remember, today we're at 320 something billion. In the last run, it went to 850 billion. I've said it a, a many times. This time, it's going to go past a trillion. I believe. I believe into multi trillions is what's going to happen. Uh, one more thing I wanted to sh to shout out. Um, XRP, uh, this, this was a, a tweet from PhDJ at PhDJ does tweets. Once again, a disruptive video from Ham's, Ham Eggs In, aka Sam I Am, who is going to, who is going to the lifeboats. A serious must watch. Share and get Sam some de deserved views. All right. First, if you want to follow, uh, Sam I Am on, on, um, on Twitter, he's Green Eggs and Ham, at Ham Eggs In. Okay. Now he is, um, he is a tech, I mean, he's a tech related channel. He's really good at what he does. Um, he's kind of, he reminds me, Galgatron on Twitter is really smart, like technology, technologically savvy guy. Well, Sam, I am who goes by to the lifeboats on YouTube, same type thing. Um, I've said many times, many different people in YouTube and Twitter add different things. You have many people who are technologically brilliant. And these two guys, Galgatron, and it, by the way, Galgatron.net is Galgatron's website, but Sam I am is, is technologically savvy too. Now, um, what, what, th what he's referring to here, and this is Sam I am's channel. Um, he got, it's by the way, it's to the lifeboats. You need to go subscribe to him. Okay. Now what this is about on my channel, I specialize more in giving you the news and focusing more than, more than anything on on um, the markets and and how I see the financial markets and how that where this is going with Wall Street and that type of thing and I touch on uh, prob I should probably talk about it more than I do because it's probably the bigger thing okay. well there's no doubt it's the bigger thing the utility of XRP well guys like Sam I am they go deep they go deeper into the utility because they can, they're, they're more tech savvy than I am. I'm not, this is, this is not uh, my expertise, but it's important that you do go and watch guys like this. So you can see um, the, the deeper things that are going on behind the scenes. In this case, he's talking about Swift and I have not finished watching. I'm about almost 20 minutes into it right now. He's talking about Swift and, and really how Swift has completely just, screwed themselves and how, how much of a joke they've made themselves in this whole process. But for those of you that don't know, Swift, it, Ripple is trying to, Ripple, the, the number one use case for XRP is more or less to either take a lot of Swift's business or replace it. And what Swift represents, when you go to the bank and you want to wire money from bank A to bank B or do an international wire from bank A to bank B, Swift is the organization that is involved in that. And it, and this is a, it's a dinosaur system. It's been, I think the Swift system was created back in the seventies or sixties or something. And it's time for it to change. And it's in the midst of being changed. In fact, their CEO is on his way out and the new CEO is coming in in July. Well, Sam, I am really goes in and, and, and before I go to this, um, I want to mention, but Swift, this part of it, you'll, you've heard Brad Garlinghouse talk a million times. He said, we're trying to solve a multi-trillion dollar problem. And he always says that in conjunction with talking about settlement. And when you hear the word settlement, he's talking about XRP, using XRP to sell. He's talking about um, the Nostro, the, these banks that are a part of Swift, they have to keep large amounts of their of, of currency in what's called Nostro accounts around the world to be a part of that SWIFT system. And what XRP is about is getting rid of that and, and letting them settle using XRP. Well, 
um, to the lifeboat, Sam I am, he, he goes into in depth into what Swift has been doing, what and, and Swift has just put out some kind of a paper of and, and now it's it's almost like they're trying to say it's almost like they're trying to say that oh yeah we're all in on blockchain it's been our idea all along and so he takes you in depth and ship talks about all of that so you need to go and watch this video it's called Swift's bold vision for the future of payments um and and like I've said many times before there's a lot of different YouTubers different ones are coming from different angles and they have different things that they bring to the table. Well, this is one of the better um, YouTubers um, in terms of, um, of explaining some of these things to you. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family. Go give to the lifeboats a subscribe and a listen because he's, he's putting out some great content that really explains the bigger picture to you. Thanks for listening.